There's been a lot of debate recently that homes are unaffordable. And I empathize with that, and there's a level of truth to that. But there's also a level of deception to that. Let me explain. Being that I'm middle-aged, I can reflect on the past 10, 20 years of adulthood. And I can definitely say um, from the years of 2009 through 2019, a 10-year period, a decade, homes were very affordable. Um, so why weren't the masses buying homes? Two reasons. One is people never want to bite the bullet. What does that mean? It means people never want to separate from their money. Their money is their security, psychologically and actually to a certain degree. And writing a deposit, whether it's 3%, 10%, or 20%, and giving it to the bank to get a loan is psychologically hard. And of course, writing a check if you had to, if you had the ability to pay cash is still hard because now you're separating yourself from even more money, more security. And in a period where houses are not going up, you'll say to yourself, why should I buy a house today if I can rent for the same or less and house prices don't go up? You only want to invest something if you think it's going to go up. And so for 10 years, houses really didn't go up that dramatically. And people say, well, why am I going to buy a house? Why do I want all that extra responsibility? Why do I want to separate myself from my security, my savings account, and give a deposit to the bank or pay cash? I'm going to just rent. Let the homeowners deal with the headaches. And, you know, they're not even getting that much appreciation in their property. People didn't want to bite the bullet. And then, of course, there's always some people that say, oh, I'm going to wait for houses to be even cheaper. When they were affordable for about a 10-year period, people say, I'll wait for them to be another crash where, where instead of $100,000, they are 50000 So I empathize that there is an issue with a level of unaffordability in the housing market here as I make this video in 2023 going into 24. But I also know from my experience that people are somewhat to blame for that for these reasons. One is they don't want to bite the bullet. They... You know, if, if a house today is 300000 okay, and they can afford it, okay, they have an average job, their spouse has an average job, and they have to push themselves, they have to separate from some savings, okay, because I know people, guys, who aren't working that have ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 in savings, so don't let everyone fool you. So, the thing is... They don't want to bite the bullet. They don't want to stretch themselves. They say, I'll forget this house at $300,000. I'll wait for it to, I'll wait for there to be a crash. It'll be $150,000. Now, fast forward 10 years from now. Okay? And in 10 years from now, if house, if that same house is $500,000, then people are going to complain that houses are unaffordable. So, people don't want to bite the bullet. I remember I had a friend I worked with when I sold my house and I was getting ready to relocate to Florida. And then, Houses were stable. I remember that was like the first time I was able to sell my house and kind of just break even because I bought a house in 2020, uh, 2000, early 2000s, 2003 or so. And my house price for the first couple of years kind of stayed the same. And then during the crash, it went down, meaning I owed more of my house than it was worth for about five years or so. And then it finally came back up and, and it kind of, you know, after all was said and done, kind of just broke even. And that's like, you know, and people during that period were like, oh, why buy a house? You know, you're underwater. Why buy a house? Your house doesn't go up that much. Let you deal with the headaches. See, people want it both ways. They want to rent with no responsibility. They want their rent to be cheap. Whenever they do want to, bu want to buy, they don't want to separate from their money. They want the house to be cheap. And then as soon as they buy it, they want their house value to go up or else they're going to complain. Why should I buy a house? People don't want to bite the bullet. And a friend of mine I worked with. He said, Sam, I totally get it. You're doing the right thing. You're selling your house first. You're repositioning it to Florida. It makes sense to sell and wait to buy. He goes, just remember, at some point, you're going to have to bite the bullet. Meaning at some point, you have to separate yourself from your savings money and put something down or pay cash or however you're going to do it. And you got to commit to something long term that initially it may not go up in value, it may go down, but long term, that's real estate. And most people, including me at times, I got to discipline myself, are short term. 
And this is how you'll look up 10 years from now and what you may be able to afford now, but you got to push yourself a little bit. You may not be able to afford 10 years from now. And that's how you get priced out of a market because you're just waiting for this absolute crash or you're waiting for you to be absolute comfortable. There are better times. You don't want to buy when you're dead broke. You don't want to buy, uh, you know, in, in certain times in your life when you're getting ready to relocate and you haven't lived in that area. I mean, you know, so there's times where you don't buy. But eventually you got to bite the bullet. And that's the message that I've lived through. Okay. And I want you to click the thumbs up, share the video, leave a positive comment. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you in a simple, practical way. And if you're middle aged, you can look at this video and relate if you're honest with yourself. If you're young, you're going to have to live through life and experience this yourself. If you're older, same thing. Look at the 30 years or 40 years of adulthood that you had and ask yourself what I just said doesn't apply, does apply. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.